All right, so AFMF2 just launched with the latest AMD driver, and today we are going to be testing it in a bunch of games. I've got an RX 6700 XT here. Now, don't get confused. I do have two overlays, one on the top left and one on the top right. There's a reason for that. I, in my previous video where I showed AFMF, I got a lot of comments. So the one on the left would correspond with the one on the right when AFMF is not being used. But when, when we enable AFMF2, the one on the right will have a higher frame rate than the one on the left because the one on the left will only show the base frame rate. It's not able to detect the AFMF frame generated frames and the one on the right is because the one on the right is the AMD overlay, right? All right, so here we've got Cyberpunk 2077 and you'd be asking me why do I test AFMF in Cyberpunk when it has FSR 3 frame generation? Well, FSR frame generation in this game sucks. Like there's uh, no other way to put it. The, let me just show you one or two of the settings here quickly. We actually have a disconnect here between uh, frame generation and the rest of the upsampling or upscaling tech. So we've got, you need to enable AMD FSR 3 for you to enable frame generation, uh, FSR frame generation that is. But then the game also has FSR 2. Uh, 2.1. Now FSR 2.1's uh, image quality is actually a lot better than FSR 3 and then the one required to enable frame generation. And also I'll link the, the previous video in the description below. The, uh, the frame times when enabling FSR frame generation is just horrible. Right, so what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be showing you how to make Cyberpunk look good and perform well. So we'll be using XSS, I know, and then uh, set it to quality mode. We don't have frame generation enabled here. So I just wanna show you the base frame rate quickly. I'm going to re reset our numbers here. So just in the same area as I tested FSR 3 frame generation previously, and we're getting around 80 to 90 frames per second. We are slightly CPU bound here with this 12400F. I'm going to be upgrading this CPU this afternoon, and uh, then I'll make my usual uh, spec sheets as well so that it's easier to identify right so we've got around 90 frames per second here frame times are pretty good actually a pretty good experience here so let me show you how we go ahead to enable frame generation or afmf2 so what you need is the latest amd driver the 24.9.1 driver i know it's uh, it's supposed to be the september date right uh, but it launched at the end of september that's why it's got that uh name 24.9.1 and if we go here to to gaming we just press alt r to get to the screen here then we've got amd fluid motion frames to right currently it's disabled and let me just show you we've got uh, i'm going to go back into the game quickly we are getting 90 ish frames per second in the specific spot right so one thing that i did notice is that afm f2 does have a performance cost to the base frame rate so we enable it and just make sure that it does show it's active, right? And then you've got search mode and performance mode. These were not available in AFMF1. So I'm just leaving this on auto, but you can select standard or high and quality and performance. Just leave them on auto, it should, it should be fine, right? And if you hover over there, it'll tell you exactly what the standard and the high settings basically mean All right so it says high is recommended for gaming at a, re a resolution 25 60 by 1440p and greater and we are currently at 1440p so we'll be i mean we we will be using high for this it, it'll auto select high and then performance mode uh, quality is recommended for discrete gps right all right so let's go back into the game previously we were getting around 90 frames per second just look at the left we now i'm going to take down the lows on the left, we now have a frame rate of 76. So we lost around 14, 15 frames per second by enabling AFMF. But if you look on the right, that base frame rate on the left is doubled, right? We are seeing 150-ish frames per second on the right. So let's uh, see what the, that was just an auto save. That's the starter there. Now, if we move around, it uh, <laughs> it really is a very smooth. It is very uh, it's very responsive at this high frame rate. There are uh, penalties when using AFMF. Uh, the same as with any frame generation technology is that the input latency does get increased, unfortunately. But at this higher base frame rate, it is definitely not really that noticeable. It's perfectly fine. And then the other thing is 
there is some ghosting when it comes to crosshairs. I'm not sure if I'll be able to capture this properly, but if you move your crosshair, you'll see the dot in the middle. It's got a little bit of ghosting, right? But the rest of the UI elements seem to be pretty fine. And we are getting 150-ish frames per second here. And then we also get the the better image quality of XCSS in this game over FSR. Now, FSR 2.1 is, is quite okay in this game. But as I said, if you if you want to use uh, AMD's frame generation, then you need to use the, the newly implemented FSR 3, which just looks horrible for some reason. So that's why I'm using XCSS here. It looks pretty good. It runs pretty good. You can see getting 150-ish frames per second here. And um, that's AFMF2 in Cyberpunk. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up we've got Pal World, and the reason why I want to show this game is because, uh, believe it or not, if you go back into the menu here, my W key just fell off. I hate this keyboard. This is a pretty expensive Logitech keyboard, but the keys keep on falling off. Anyway, so let's get rid of that. If we go into our graphics settings here, we can just press Control Shift and O. So we're on the Epic preset at uh, 1440p, and this game does not support FSR. Okay, so there's no way for you to, to increase your frame rate unless you you change the graphical settings, right? But it is strange that a game this popular does not have FSR. It's, uh, I would have expected them to implement FSR uh, already. I know it's an early access game, but still FSR, I think, seeing that it is so popular, uh, it's really not that much to ask for FSR. Anyway, so we are getting around 60 frames per second here. So let's go ahead and enable AFMF. So once again, we just press Alt and R, and then we can enable AFMF here. Just make sure that it does show active and auto, auto, right? And then if we go back to our game, you can see our base frame rate dropped from 60 frames per second to 53 frames per second on the left. But on the right, we are now getting 105 frames per second. And in this one, the crosshair does disappear a little bit, unfortunately. So if we... If we move like this, there's really no, no issue. But if you move the mouse a little bit faster, you'll see that the crosshair does disappear against the backdrop there. A across the sky, it does not. It's just when there are trees and stuff and rocks, it does disappear a bit. So as I said, AFMF is, is definitely much better than AFMF1. But seeing that it is not really game aware, it's not implemented within the game, it does not have motion vectors. So there will be some issues, right? Especially with UI elements and crosshairs and stuff. But what I wanted to show you earlier and I forgot to show you in Cyberpunk is AFMF1 actually had issues where if you move the camera too fast, the it would stop generating frames to keep up the, the image quality, right? But this one does not do that. You can see that the frame rate stays 105. There was a stutter there. 105 106 frames per second <laughs> so that's the that's the upgrade that afmf2 got one of the bigger up, upgrades um that and the fact that it is actually it looks a lot better than AM, afmf1 so fine the the crosshair does disappear a bit but only when it's that transparent now you can see there's a little bit of ghosting still i don't think this is horrible i think it is definitely usable in certain scenarios where where either we don't have access to FSR or FSR 3.1 frame generation. All right, so I'm going to be testing one more game and then we'll call it. All right, I was going to show you Dragon's Dogma 2, but it seems like we just got invaded. So let's do some combat as well. All right, I'll see if I can um, pause at least and then go into, into combat uh, and uh, do AFMF in combat, I mean. But you can see here, uh, we are at 1440p on the high preset, right? And uh, we are getting 50-ish, uh, well, not even 50 frames per second. And uh, it's because we are CPU bound. So uh, you can you can have a look at the GPU usage in the top left-hand corner. It does actually go up quite a bit in this uh, specific um, area. And uh, did we just beat that guy? That was quite quick. Okay, so we won't be testing AFMF in combat, <laughs> apparently. Uh, so this game is very CPU bound in the city. We are... At times, uh, we do become GP bound at times, but even at 1440p with this uh, CPU and uh, this GPU, we are CPU bound in the city. It, uh, it really is pretty horribly optimized, the, the city, the NPCs. I've done quite a few videos on it. But anyway, uh, we we are using FSR quality here. Uh, I need to holster my weapon. There we go. So 
frame times are pretty rough. The frame rate is pretty rough. And I previously did say that the, the only issue is the cities, right? But even outside in the wilds, you do get areas which which become very CPU bound and stuttering frame times are all over the place. It's it's really not a good experience at the moment and does not bode well for Monster Hunter Wilds, which will be using the same engine, right? All right, so 50-ish frames per second here. Let me just enable AFMF quickly. All right, once again, it's set to active and we, this game, we don't really see that big a drop in the base frame rate. I believe it's because we are so CPU bound, but now we are still seeing a base frame rate of 57 in the left, but 114 on the right. Now, unfortunately, this is not going to help you with your frame times. The game does uh, suffer from horrible frame times, but it, it definitely helps a lot with the motion fluidity, right? Sure, this does not increase your performance. Let's get uh, that out of the way. It generates frames in between real frames and it just increases the motion fluidity. It does not reduce input latency. In fact, it increases input latency. But as I said, if you do get a high enough base frame rate, it's really not that noticeable. And the UI elements in this game are actually pretty okay with AFMF. So, so text is okay as well. Like it does become a little bit garbled. This is actually one issue of frame generation as well as text above NPCs or in-game text. But over here, it's actually quite okay. It's not horrible. So I do think that AFMF2, it, it's got its uses, as I said, in games that don't support FSR or any other upscalers that you can't use on Radeon GPUs. And then in games where the FSR frame generation is just lacking like cyberpunk so that's my video about afmf2 hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one